of Selective meetings are broadcast live on Comcast Channel 15, the government channel, and all comments are recorded for airing at future dates. First up on our appointments is a 7 p.m. meeting with Soundcheck Studios and then a request for a special liquor license one day on October 6, 2018 from 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. at 150 Corporate Park Drive. 150. 150. Anyway. Hi, please come on. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming It's a real pleasure to be here. We want to express our sincere gratitude and appreciation for having us here tonight and also for the opportunity that we find in Pembroke to establish and grow our business, Soundcheck Studios. All right, I'm, my name is Andrew Herman. This is my brother Eric Herman. We're the owners. And yes, we're here to request a one day permit for our debut event coming up on October 6th. Where it's call, it's a, uh, we're calling it Harvest Fest. It's a concert event where. Flyer for the there you go. Great, thank you. You guys are all invited. Thank you. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, and, and Harvest Fest is our debut event um, where it's really more or less our grand opening and designed to introduce us to the Pembroke and South Shore community. And we're going to have uh, three bands there. One of them, Quadrafunk, who is actually a homegrown Pembroke band. They're all from Pembroke. And uh, we're, yeah, and we're looking forward to it. And, um, you know, it's really the beginning of a long-term vision and dream of ours that uh, we've been working very hard to become reality. And we have to say that we look to you as partners in, in our venture. And, and with this endeavor and all future endeavors that we find ourselves in, we, we want to do things the right way and, and go through the proper procedures. and. And, and, you know, and all in the spirit of being responsible members of the Pembroke, uh, uh, you know, corporate citizens. Um, we also just wanted to say that we take very seriously and uh, place a high amount of importance on public safety. And to that end, we feel like we have a comprehensive and strong plan in place to ensure public safety with uh, a police detail. We have uh, the TIP certified servers. We have a well-staffed event, uh, a wristband system for IDs to make sure there's no uh, underage drinking or anything like that. We're gonna have a large emphasis on no drinking and driving. Um, and uh, of course, we're gonna have the proper liability insurances in place. So, with that being said, again, we appreciate your consideration and certainly answer any questions you may have. <clears throat> uh, so, the, this license request uh, aside, uh, while you have the public, uh, there might not be a lot of people in the room, but there are some folks watching. Yeah. It is broadcast live and recording, so why don't you tell the public about your business, what you do? For sure. We'd Soundcheck, love to. Soundcheck Studios, we're musicians. We play musicians on a very amateur level for uh, you know about 20 years, um, and we we're looking for a space to for our little band to practice monthly. We can never get enough time because we have the kids, and you know we have little kids, and we can't get everybody together. And so we looked out in South Shore trying to find a music rehearsal space we could rent monthly. There's nothing out there, so we started our own. So it started out of necessity, um, and right now we have. Uh, one hourly room where it has all the drum sets and gear. You just bring your instruments, plug in and play. Um, and that's for $35 an hour. Um, and you just have to book ahead of time then. The rest of the complex is, we have right now three monthly rooms that are for rent. We're currently in the, pro in the middle of build out of seven more monthly rooms. It's a 12,000 square foot facility, uh, standalone warehouse at the end of the corporate park in Pembroke. And, uh, so yeah, we're, and then we're, we'll also have an open mic stage and we, we're actually going to have a bigger stage where, so it's an overall music complex where bands and artists can come rehearse, practice, and uh, also perform. Very good, thank you. Yeah. Very good, anybody else, any questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if you'll accept one, I'll, I'll make a motion. Sure. Uh, make a motion to approve the one-day special liquor license application under Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Subsection 14 of Andrew Herman, Soundcheck Studios for the sale of beer and wine on October 6, 2018, 
from 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. at 150 Corporate Park Drive. Second. All right, is my motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye as well. And that uh, passes unanimously. Thank you for coming in. Well, welcome Thank to Pembroke. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, guys. All right. I look forward to being part of the Pembroke community for from, from, <coughs> from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you. Thanks for Thanks being here. Lot. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, take care. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the time. Bye, 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 Alrighty, so next up is Mike Buckley here. Mike, would you have any interest in going early and talking about the status of operating budget prior to special town meeting? <laughs> um, thank you for having me tonight. I'm pleased to report that uh, the town of Pembroke has beat about 90% of the other towns in the Commonwealth to the um, finish line, and we've sent everything into the state uh, for our year end, June 30th. Uh, the books are closed, the books are balanced. Everything has been approved by the Department of Revenue, and our uh, free cash has been certified at $1.7 million. Uh, this is about 2.7% of budget. We'd like to see it higher, of course, the the yardstick is that uh, the recommendation is that it be uh, three to five percent or two to three million, but um, we we, uh, we still actually feel pretty good about the two point seven percent or the one point seven million dollars. Um, just to step back a little bit, free cash is basically your certified surplus from the previous fiscal year, and free cash is a normal thing town doesn't have free cash or if the town has negative free cash, something seriously is wrong um, for two reasons. Free cash is derived from surplus revenues, in other words, revenues that were higher than budgeted. The state only allows you to budget what you collected in the previous fiscal year in most circumstances, so you almost have to have a surplus. And free cash is also derived from returned appropriations. So we very good departments. We don't do the June 30th shopping spree that most towns, a lot of towns do. And we have very responsible departments that turn money back to the town. And um, because, of course, it's against the law to go over and spend more, other than certain, in certain circumstances, spend more than your budget. So um, close to a million dollars was turned back by different department heads, different departments. So all that um, shook out to be $1.7 million. Mike, right there, yep. on the, on the uh, revenues coming in higher than expected, what were some of the categories that came in a little higher than uh, was well, expected? The, the expected. Treasurer Collector's Office is continuing to do a great job um, collecting back taxes. Um, of course, that's, uh, that declines as you go, as you get more and more um, cooperation or more and more uh, the collections are better. Um, the antenna revenue, the solar farm, the motor vehicle excise was higher. We got a couple big building permits. We actually got another big building permit this August. So um, as far as that goes, that's uh, going well for this year, fiscal 19 as well. Um, but it was, um, for the most part, a lot of little things adding up to about $700,000 in surplus revenues out of the 60 $4 million budget and about $1 million in unspent appropriations out of this $54 million budget. Um, before we can begin to decide what to do with this $1.7 million, we have to permanently uh, close out last year. And we ended last year with a snow and ice deficit of $450,000. So the one, uh, as I alluded to earlier, the one one of the few budgets that can be deficit spent uh, is so nice. We went over that by 450000 We did begin this year, fiscal 19, and we'll keep that going for fiscal 20 uh, for the first time in the 25 years plus um, that I've been involved. We have increased that budget, so hopefully in five, 10 years we can fully fund that and not have to do this anymore. Um, but that brings our um, free cash down by a substantial amount. And another thing um, we have to do, when, when we get into the, uh, the warrant for town meeting, this will all be laid out um, 
in sequence. The school department did a fantastic job in the school roof projects. We um, actually got surplus reimbursement from the state, more than we thought. So because that was a prop two and a half debt exclusion, we owe it to the town and by law are required. Uh, we owe it to their taxpayers. We, we are required to give that back to them. So we have to lower the tax rate by, I think it's another $150,000 uh, in that neighborhood. So that leaves us with about um, $1.1 million that we can uh, decide what to do at this time of the evening. Now last May's town meeting voted a budget that depended on appropriating $500,000 of the debt. Once you do that, pretty much have to do it forever or, or grow out of it and you're not in any um, position to grow out of it. So the first thing I would recommend that it, we reserve from that 1.1 million, reserve at least 500,000 for the fiscal 20 budget so we start at the same level. And that would, um, and if everyone agrees and town meeting agrees, that would leave us with roughly $600,000 to um, contemplate either spending or savings. Um, or we can contemplate not doing anything at all with it, just um, increasing that 500 to 600 or um, keeping a little bit of money uh, set aside in case something interesting comes up. Uh, we do have an article on the warrant and, um, for a capital plan do have a warrant, an article on the warrant for savings accounts, and uh, we can get into those now or we can get into those later. But that's really where we stand, how we finish fiscal 18, and where we stand for that. And I would just make one more point um, before we go on to the next item. 500000 in one-time money in the budget is really getting to the point of no return where we're, we're forcing, we're, we're, we're paying recurring bills on one-time money and that's going to fire. There are three articles on the special time meeting warrant that ask for additions to budgets. Um, so permanent spending, I would recommend against all three of those because it's my belief that once we pass 500 and if we voted um, these three articles be approaching, I think, seven or eight hundred thousand in one time money go through the budget. Um, we're just going to create um, a level of expectations and create uh, a scenario where in fiscal 20 we're um, moving backward instead of forward. So I'll just uh, leave with that. And if you want to get into the warrant, we can. Well, thank you for coming in. Any yeah. questions? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> right, so Mike, as, as you and, and others already know, we're trying to move capital expenditures from fall, fall town meeting to the spring. Um, and doing that, the first year that that happens, the first transition, there's really no money in the kitty for that. So we were hoping to take some of this money, even a small, a small little nest egg, out of this money that you've presented to us tonight uh, to set aside for that. But I don't see really any money set aside for that to speak of here. So uh, could you just talk to that <coughs> subject for us? Sure, that is, that is still an option um, to put money aside in the capital fund, but then there are, um, actually when we get to the warrant, there are um, department requests and many of those are very pressing can't really afford right now without borrowing. Uh, Kathleen and I have worked on it. Um, we feel we can accommodate most, if not all of those borrowings and keep us under the 2% level of debt service we wanted to stay at. But um, I think as is, is the case in most years, there really um, isn't a lot of money, um, isn't as much money uh, as is necessary. 
uh, it's going to be very difficult. Okay, and that's important to know because if, if that's the reality, uh, it, if the, if that's the reality, then next year is going to be very lean toward capital spending or non-existent really until the following spring. So. If everyone in the, every department head needs to know that and, and consider that. And between you, Ed, uh, and the department heads, the Board of Selectmen, of course, we'll have to have some heart to hearts about that, about that grim reality. True, but if we, we are doing the right thing, we're, we're, we're planning short term and long term. And um, the idea is three to five years from now, we have this capital plan, um, you know, rolling on all eight cylinders. And, um, making the squeeze in the bucket, making it go further. Uh, gentlemen, uh, in Mike's memo, he mentions that there will be approximately, after uh, allocating uh, some 350000 for uh, the various savings accounts, mm -hmm. we got about 148000 uh, available to spend at this Town meeting. Yeah, if we save three hundred fifty thousand, which right. is what I put forward, um, then we have about one hundred fifty thousand right. available. Now, of that one hundred fifty, would some of that have to go towards any debt service for any of these borrowings that are being proposed? Not yet. What Kathleen and I are working on um, is fitting those new borrowing obligations um, where other obligations. <laughs> so we stay below that magical two percent of budget. Got it. So this hundred and forty eight thousand that uh, you have available, that would be just strictly cash purchase. Correct. Right. And I would say too, I'm glad you brought that up. The assessors every year put aside between three and four hundred thousand dollars, which you have to do is the law, um, for abatements and exemptions. Uh, they've done a really good job on valuing properties. And they've been able to release 103,000 um, back to the town. So that 103 gets added to the 148 that we just talked about. So we're really in actual cash spending. We're talking about 250,000. Okay, uh, just carry on with that 148,000. Is that to be expended at this fall town meeting, or to be carried over for the spring? Uh, right now, um, the requests roughly equal <coughs> that 100. 48 plus the 103. Right, and that was that was my suspicion. Yeah. So spring town meeting, we're really not going to have uh, a, a nest egg. Right, there won't be a nest egg, right. <laughs> There'll be forward progress, but not a nest egg, right. Yeah, it's just going to be, it's, it's that one transition year that's mm -hmm. going to be tough on everybody. Now, speaking of the capital improvements plan, um, <clears throat> Mike, and I and Kathleen today met with uh, one of the uh, firms that is interested in doing the capital improvements plan that we got funded with some uh, community compact money and also a contribution from the reserve fund by the advisory committee. And so, uh, um, and we'll be meeting with uh, another firm, uh, UMass Boston, that did our long range forecasting. We'll be meeting with them Wednesday afternoon and then we'll be making a decision uh, to the board next Monday night as to which uh, firm we want to have uh, do the capital improvements plan. We want to get them started on this ASAP. And uh, so that, that'll be on uh, your agenda next Monday night, uh, approving a, uh, the hiring of a firm to do the uh, long range uh, five year capital plan. And, that, and that'll be done by, our plan is to have it done by December 31st. So that when we do the budget process for FY 2020, you'll have a full-blown official <coughs> capital improvements plan, five-year capital improvements plan, based on input from the school department, the various town departments um, that are done by these professionals. That's important for us <clears throat> to know and to help budget going forward. So it's a, it's a little long overdue, but I'm glad we're working on it. And Mr. Chairman, while we got Mike here, um, if you wouldn't mind taking the agenda out of order so that we could deal with the special town meeting warrant while Mike's here. Absolutely.
table shows the articles, the table shows the purpose of those articles, and for the most part the table shows the amount re amounts requested. I intentionally left out the amounts requested for those three articles that ask for uh, increased operating budgets. Um, I just consider those out of the question, but others may not. Um, there are 18 articles in all. And um, we can go through them if that's the board's desire. Or just do a 30,000 foot flyover. Or I think we should go through them. Help us. Good. So the first article, um, and forgive me, the, um, I'm not too good at typing, even in this day and age. Um, the first and second articles are flipped. The first article is to reduce the, what we call reduced taxation in order to pay for last year's snow deficit. And that's the 451,000 um, I had talked about before. The second article, and these are the two must do's uh, at this meeting, is reducing the tax rate to def reflect the savings on the school uh, roof project. We have to do, do, do those two, and that is uh, roughly $650,000. The third article um, is the one increase in the operating budget that I am recommending, and that is we have a change in the global recycling environment. We used to be paid for our recyclables. Now we are paying to dispose of our recyclables at a rate of about $15,000 a month that wasn't built into the budget because this wasn't happening when we put the budget together last December, or last January, but we need to do that now so we don't have a deficit at the end of the year. And then the fourth article uh, is the capital budget. And there is a chart on the page for article four that lists all the requests from the various department, all the way from the assessors to the school department. Um, it's quite a list. Not all would come from free cash, some would come from borrowing. I know the water department is about to um, embark on a major capital spending program that in my eyes is long overdue to keep that system up to, uh, up to speed. So it's up, up to the board to go over these individually. Um, so could I ask, Mike? Sure. These requests are made by the department. Uh, is there a recommendation by town accountant, town administrator on all of these line items? We will. We will have a recommendation. Okay. What I try to do, what I consider my role, um, I don't want to say that I recommend you do something. Uh, I can recommend you don't do something, but it's really, in my eyes, up to the department head to advocate for you to recommend that, that they do something. But what I try to put together is, okay, if you want to pay for this, this is how I would pay for it. So that's how I view my role. Ed's is a little different, and the department heads is a little different after that. Okay, so what we'll do is, as, as you see, if you just eyeball that number, other than the borrowing, it the requests are probably more than what we have available. It'll be close. And so I think that we'll uh, be looking at that, you know, over the next two weeks. Um, and as Mike said earlier, there's a couple of articles that have been suggested by departments for additional personnel or to increase the size of their budget. And this is outside the scope of Article 4. So it's too early to make a recommendation now. But well, I think yeah. we're going to look at some of these numbers, yeah. you know, based on what you got tonight from Mike regarding what's available to spend in October. 
Now Sabrina is going to need the board to Sabrina, has the board decided to include these in the warrant, or do you need that tonight? Okay. So the board has to decide tonight whether or not to include these articles in the warrant. All right. I have a question uh, on a couple of them right now that you can maybe help clear clear sure. something up. Uh, this is quite a few water articles here yep. or requests. Mm -hmm. So that's borrowing against uh, the water enterprise fund. Yes. Not the town. Correct. Yep. That's the. That's. I just want to make good sure. Good and bad of having an enterprise fund. You're responsible for all your bills. You have right. to keep all the revenue you generate, but you're responsible for all your bills. Yeah, and that, that's an important distinction for for people to know. Yeah. We do have um, two rather large borrowings or two rather large requests we can't afford to pay with cash. They're for two frontline fire pumpers. Um, and right now I'm saying if you want to do that, um, we need to do that by borrowing and it's probably not a bad idea to um, get a new pumper every seven, eight or nine years because that's how long they, they last as a frontline vehicle and after seven or eight years you need to buy a new one um, to have that serve as a frontline vehicle. So um, ordinarily, you don't like to borrow for equipment, but in this case, I think it makes sense. So Ed, before you give us a recommendation mm -hmm. in, in the coming days, uh, will you sit down with each department head and hammer out these numbers to make sure that they're, they're accurate or required? Yep. Thank you. Mike, how about uh, Article 5? Article 5, uh, the Municipal Modernization Act changed the way um, we can deal with what are called bond premiums. When, when we borrow money, sometimes we're given a premium. Uh, we borrow money in a competitive bidding environment, and different bidders will quote us an interest rate, but also quote us a premium. In, in other words, they'll, they'll give us a bonus for, for uh, lending to us. And the state has new requirements on how we deal with that money, and that this is Kathleen um, asking for this article in order to comply with the Modernization Act. Article 6 uh, the Water Department would, would like to create their own stabilization fund within their enterprise funds. Like I said, they, um, they're about to embark on a major capital improvement plan. So, Mike, what's the advantages of having <coughs> a stabilization fund? Um, well, what you'd like to do is raise rates gradually as, as opposed to doing it all at once uh, because um, water, as a, as a rule, is a very capital-intensive, probably cost $800 million to, to replace what we have now. And um, what you do is um, we haven't raised rates in quite some time, and what we'd like to do is raise rates gradually, so um, the more things we can pay cash for and the less things we borrow for when we put new wells in and replace the wells and the maintain the tanks that we have, um, we can, the more we can pay cash for and the less we can borrow for, the better. You read, you read in the paper of 35 40% water rate hikes, and that's what we want to prevent. So I see a, uh, an article for a fund. Uh, is there an article to fund that fund? Uh, no, just to create the fund right now. Okay. We could probably amend the language if we wanted to, but uh, we're, we're not to add an appropriation, but it's not necessary at this time. Um, article 7, I just threw out um, in the warrant hypotheticals. Uh, we do have, I think, uh, in the <coughs> OPEP, other post-employment benefits, uh, health insurance for retiree um, liability, actuarial liability in the tens of millions. We have about 700000 in that fund now. Uh, I'm recommending another 100000 be added to it. We have a separation 
pay fund where when our employees separate service, they get their accumulated sick and vacation time. Um, there's about 300,000 in that fund now, but there are also um, probably something the board should talk about at a later date. There are also now um, employees getting comp time when they separate service, and that's substantially increasing that liability. So I'm recommending 125,000 from free cash to um, fund that. The special injury relief, two years ago, we became self-insured for police and fire, um, what everyone else would call workers' comp, injured on duty. I'm recommending 25,000 be added to that. One year ago, we, we became self-insured for workers' comp, or six months ago, I'm recommending $75,000 be added to that fund and every year we add about 25,000 to the roughly 1.4 million we have in the stabilization fund and I'm recommending we do that again. Now article 8 I think we'll probably pull it because um, this is something that we have been looking at um, this is just combining all of the maintenance salaries in town hall, a library, council on aging, and community center. Um, I'm going to give that some more thought for about another week. Um, it's not necessary. It's something we'd like to do because we want to consolidate the you know, building maintenance in the one department anyway. Um, but uh, so I would suggest to the board that, uh, that 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 be put on hold for at least one more week, and I'll come back. With a recommendation. We're going to do it eventually. Just don't know whether the time is right for that. So, um, Article 9 and 10 are just uh, properties that the treasure collector um, is uh, turning over to uh, um, conservation and the selected, correct, uh, Mike? Mm -hmm. And they've been you know, shared with the conservation agent about having some of those properties be put in into uh, under the uh, auspices of the conservation commission. In Article Nine, those properties go under the board of selectmen. Article Ten, conservation commission. Article Eleven is uh, an article that was submitted by the DPW director. Um, you know, probably that will be something that, uh, you know, might not be recommended uh, at this stage of the game. You know, we always want to have that available. Uh, and it was something that was on the, uh, uh, you know, on the warrant last spring and, you know, on the ballot as well. Um, you know, right now we're just, you know, the way things are, as tight as they are, uh, we don't think it would be appropriate at this time. And that'll be something that uh, I think will be uh, decided on next week. Um, Article 12, Mike? Article 12, um, there's a statute that allows the town to authorize an additional $1,000 in compensation to the chief assessor um, if she or if they, um, whoever they may be, um, are certified by their association. And the Board of Assessors have asked that we um, ask town meeting to accept that provision. That money is already in the budget, so it doesn't require an appropriation. 13. Uh, the chief, I don't want to speak for him, is asking for overtime, additional funding for overtime. Please, chief, sorry. So we'll have him in the next two meetings to discuss that. It's kind of early in the game to be looking at an overtime line item uh, expenditure. Uh, Article 14, again, we'll have him come in to explain why. Um, and Mike did not put any dollar amounts in there, although the explanation by the chief would be that uh, hiring two full-time police officers would cost 77000 for the rest of the fiscal year and uh, 155 for uh, an entire fiscal year starting in 2020. Article 15 is another situation where um, 
there's a full-time position in the maintenance department and uh, the recreation director is asking that the general fund um, fund the uh, difference of twenty thousand um, dollars we'll probably have the, the recreation director come in here to explain why uh, we think that it is an alternative uh, funding source and article 16 are all recommendations from the community preservation committee and 17 is the uh, um, petition article Ed, you, yeah. pardon me, uh, on Article 15, could you have a conversation with our Recreation Commission uh, to see if that custodial uh, expenditures could be taken out of their revolving fund? I would be happy to do that. Thank you. And Article 17 is the uh, citizen petition on the plastic ban, uh, <coughs> reduction of single-use plastic bans as it's time. Any questions? We still have 18. It's the home rule. The retirees. Oh, yeah. The home rule petition for the uh, four retirees. All right. Thank you for that explanation. Yeah, thanks. You need the board to vote to include the articles that submitted or specifically exclude the article so we can have a final document to go to advisory and council. Anything that I would want right now, and I, we did chat about uh, was our article 8, which I don't think is necessary right now. It's something that we want to do. But uh, it's something we don't really have to do right now. Article 8. But you could keep it in, too. You could just it doesn't cost, it's not costing anybody any money. It's just we're just moving budgets around like we did for the Department of Municipal Inspections and uh, the utility budgets that we did. Well, also, past. since we're holding off on the police's requests, also, until we can talk to Chief Wall, uh, <coughs> do we want a week for that, or do we want to basically say, here we go, we're just going to change it up mm -hmm. if it goes through or not, I mean, as usual? Just to make sure advisory has, I guess, a copy to go through and give their their opinions on the budget. It's a, a multi-step process. The step we need to take care of tonight is to um, vote to include the items in the warrant. I think there's a deadline approaching. Whether or not you recommend those later, Okay. Mr. Chairman, as we're not going to recommend um, all of the articles, obviously, uh, I would move that we vote to include uh, all the articles uh, as submitted on the warrant. Second. All right. He's got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I would I as well. So that passes unanimously. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. Alrighty, so we're moving on to the board action items. Mm -hmm. The first of which is a vote to accept the resignation of Eve Massilio from the Council on Aging Board. Move to accept with regret the resignation of Eve Massilio. Second. Alright, we've got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Everybody as well. So we've accepted that resignation. Next one is a vote to appoint associate member Joseph Ryan to a vacancy on the Council on on aging board. Mr. Chairman, I move to appoint Joseph Ryan to the Council of Aging Board, term to expire 2021. Second. All right, there's been a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye as well. Any opposed? I hear none. And it also passes. Next up, we have a vote to appoint applicant to Conservation Commission vacancy Gino Fellini of 239 Oldham Street. Uh, Chairman, I'd like some to discussion on this. Sure. Uh, with other boards that happen in this town, uh, it seems that Gino hasn't gotten a recommendation from the Conservation Commission, just like any other board that we have in town. So I just kind of want, I guess, an explanation why we have, do have the Chairman here from uh, Conservation to explain, but also to see if we can actually make this a practice later on. 
to see, make sure we have a recommendation from any board or any commission before we approve as a board. All right, so you're asking the chairman to come up? I would like the chairman to come up and to uh, ask to see what, uh, what's going on. Good evening. Mark Sotier, chairman of the Conservation Commission. And uh, I'll preface my comments by saying what I say here tonight is no disrespect uh, to Mr. Fellini or the person bringing him forward. It's, it's certainly <coughs> more towards a respect of the process. So as an applicant myself, when I got in front of the board, I was interviewed. The board voted whether to move me forward or not, as they did with other applicants. We have not had the opportunity to interview Mr. Fellini or other applicants for this open position. We currently have three applications for the position and uh, one pending. And I think, uh, you know, it's in the town's best interest uh, to have a, a process where we can interview applicants, make sure we have a diverse pool to choose from, recommend to you the best folks that we feel would be a good fit for the board, and then you act accordingly. And this process was not followed, and I would just like to slow it down, back it up, and make sure that we get to ap and interview all our applicants and then recommend to you thoughtfully somebody that uh, we feel is a good fit. I mean, it's as simple as that for me. And again, it's nothing personal to Mr. Fellini or anyone else. It's a, it's a process situation. Yes. Um, first of all, um, I've been on the board uh, almost 11 years, uh, going into my 12th year. Um, the other boards and commissions don't interview the applicants, the Board of Selectmen do. Um, in this particular case here, uh, Mr. Fellini has put his application in over a month ago. Um, and I wanted to put his application in um, originally when he first submitted it because I, I know him and I know what, what type of a guy he is and, and he'd make an excellent member of conservation. Um, and the thing is that I was addressed about um, a procedure that the Board of Selectmen made up about um, people coming on boards and commissions. And part of that was that the applicant should go to whatever board and commission that that is uh, and find out whether they wanted to go on that board or commission. They don't necessarily have to do that. And there's a lot of applicants that have come in and put an application in and have never gone to a board or commission and got their recommendation. And the Board of Selectmen have made numerous appointments to boards and commissions throughout the 11 years that I've been here as a Board of Selectmen and, and uh, not been had recommendations from that particular board. Um, this particular issue here is that the last applicant that resigned from the Conservation Commission missed 15 meetings. So that means there's about six months that that board, the Conservation Commission, has not had a full board, right? Six months without that. So as you read that, that uh, guideline that the Board of Selectmen put out that you want to change, um, I would like to make a suggestion that if that's something that happens, that you want to make a change to that, then submit your information to the Board of Selectmen and we'll make that change. Conservation doesn't make these appointments, the Board of Selectmen does. And it's up to the Board of Selectmen whether we make an appointment or not, because it's, it's our board that makes this appointment, not the conservation, or not any of these other boards. So this particular issue here, he's, he's had his application in over a month. He went to his two meetings. So if you slow down and hold up this process anymore, we could be as far as another month to a month and a half down the line before, if you include all the holidays and all that that we're going to have off, um, before, there is an, uh, before there is a full board. Well, as you, as there's, you also, there's also one of the members that's on the board that is submitted verbally twice that I know of to a bunch of different people that he's resigning from the board. So this leaves that open 
for you to have your process that you want to interview all of these people and do all of that and make a recommendation. Um, I don't think it has anything to do with Mr. Polini. I think the board should make a decision tonight on whether we appoint him and put him on to fill the board. Well, I would um, say to your latter point, that's hearsay, so I haven't seen anybody's formal resignation, and I don't believe the board has either. So to me, that's a moot point today as we talk. And I would just say again that we understand, I understand that the board makes the appointments, and that's not what I'm here talking about. It's about a fair process to screen all applicants and give everybody a fair chance to uh, see if they want to be a member and see if they're going to be a fit. And it's, it's really just what any reasonable person would expect. And I would think that you would want input from the commission to see who we feel would be a good fit, as opposed to somebody that we haven't even talked to. And again, it's, he might, Mr. Fellini might be the greatest guy in the world, and I'm not saying he isn't, and that's not the point of this. It's about the process. I don't want to be redundant, but it's as simple as that. Well, the process was followed. And, the process, and he, well, and he went to. It certainly wasn't the process when I was when I was an applicant, and, and I and went in front of this board. And he went to two different meetings, uh, and and you couldn't have interviewed him during those two meetings. He, he was at the first meeting when I didn't even know there was a vacancy on the board, sir. Well, that probably shows his great interest in being on. Well, the it board. probably shows that he knew there was a vacancy before I did. And again, that's not personal to him. It's, it's just the fact. It's, it just seems like, a, you know, I don't want to go down a bad road here, and I don't want to keep beating this horse, but I've made my point, and I think, again, anybody reasonable could understand it, and I'll leave that to you. Well, nobody else has. I did. Yep. Okay. So, uh, just for, for clarification, the, the position didn't become open until August 20th when, uh, when the previous member resigned. The re resignation was August 20th. Uh, now, there are times when this board, and it is a, it is a board of selectmen decision. No, Understood. It's, it's a board of selectmen's decision. And there are times where, uh, matter of fact, we, we hired someone tonight uh, without ever talking to them. There was a recommendation email from, from that board, the Council on Aging, that recommended that person. So I've seen it happen in a number of different ways, where we'd get a recommendation as simple as an, an email or, or a friend of someone else on, on a board would recommend their, a person knowing that they do well in, on the job, not just because they're a friend, but someone they know and could recommend. And I've seen interviews where there are uh, uh, competitors looking for the same position. Um, so I've seen it done a whole host of ways. Ultimately, it, it is the Board of Selectmen's decision. And with there's, there's been some um, friction, put it mildly, between the Board of Selectmen and, and the conservation in the, in the, in the past, and the near past, really. So I wanted to make sure I went to, uh, went a little bit above and beyond this. So I, I did speak to Mr. Fellini over the phone for had a nice long conversation with him uh, this weekend because I wanted to make sure that um, it wasn't someone from the Board of Selectmen or the Board of Selectmen putting someone on a, on a pedestal or, or, or forcing them onto uh, a committee. And uh, from what I've heard from Mr. Fellini, it's, it's not the case at all. He's independently shown interest in it and he just happens to, to know Mr. Bolter. And, and the, the, the board has friction with the conservation, and, and we know that Bill's had a little more than, than the rest of us uh, the past year <laughs> or so. But what I would like to do is I would like the Board of Selectmen to, uh, to speak to Mr. Fellini tonight, and he can reiterate some of the things that uh, that alleviate my worries mm -hmm. of him on the board. I would just uh, like to add to that that uh, I certainly have no friction with anybody on this board, including Mr. Bolter. I've worked in other projects with Mr. Bolter and that's all well and good. A again, it's it, what are you saying to the other applicants that don't get a fair shot? You know, you're just going to discourage people from, from applying for positions if they don't even get the, the courtesy of an interview. Uh, I, just, I just think it's a bad business. And one of the things that 
we say over and over is we don't want to turn away someone who wants to volunteer for the town because you can't get enough of them. Um, so I, I understand that point, and would I, but I would like the, the board to, to hear Mr. Fellini while, while he's here and have his side of it. And I do understand mm -hmm. uh, where you're coming from as chairman. It, you've uh, explained your position very well, and it's very reasonable also. And I would prefer, uh, I would prefer a recommendation from from a committee, and that that's how I would like to see it. But it it hasn't always been that way, and it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. But it, but it is a best pra practice. Thank you. All right, I think Dan has a great suggestion. Mr. Fellini, would you like to come up and maybe tell us why you want to join the Conservation Commission? Uh, I'm retired. I have the time, and I've always had an interest in uh, nature and the environment, and uh, I think it's a good fit for me. I'm on the F Fisheries Commission already, and uh, I think it goes hand in hand. And uh, I just want to do what's right for everybody involved, and the animals, the fish, and, uh, you know, the landscape. And I don't want to get into politics. I just want to do the right thing. And uh, am I qualified? Uh, I think volunteering my time and wanting to do the right thing and do a good job makes me qualified. Because uh, I think it basically takes common sense and a willingness to work. Fisheries is no no easy chore cleaning streams. And we know uh, the pay's not that good. But uh, uh, I think I can help. Can I ask you, um, who, who signed your application to uh, recommend you to this position? Uh, Whose name did I put down? Very, very uh, You got a copy of it? Uh, Rick Madden, Art Eddington, and uh, my next door neighbor, Joe McCann, who was a police officer in the town. I uh, so put their names down as references, and I worked with uh, Art on the fisheries and also Rick and he's very informative knows all about animals and uh, uh, the way nature works and everything else and I'm very interested in it so you know um, I'm a little selfish in that regard I get I get to learn stuff as I'm helping out it as well isn't it fair to say that two people on conservation have already recommended you for this position uh, and a retired police officer. Yeah, because you know, they thought it was a good fit. And, you know, I, I went to the meetings because I had an interest in conservation. And there was an opening, and, you know, if there was an opening, I wanted to get on. John, go ahead. Uh, since basically two people from conservation recommended you, uh, well, and you get, went to the two they, meetings. I put the names down as references. Exactly. No, but pretty much what to Mr. Bolter's point of uh, two people there, and you went to two meetings. Did you introduce yourself to the meet the two meetings you went to that you were an applicant for this position, that you were interested in this position? You no, know, I mentioned that I was interested in conservation as well as fisheries and uh, you know I wanted to learn about uh, the North River Commission and the uh, North and South River Watershed Association and how all that stuff works and I take an interest in uh, stream locations and how everything works and you know um, but specifically did you tell the board you were going to apply for this posi for a position on the commission did I tell did, did you tell them? Yeah. Because, I mean, you have the two folks that are here part of the commission, but the chairman didn't, didn't know. So if you said during the meeting, saying, yes, you know, I'm interested in this, you know, if there's an nope. opening, I'd like to apply. I sat in 
as uh, you know, somebody from the public to see if I'd be interested in uh, becoming something if there was an opportunity. You know, one thing that's interesting, though, is uh, the person that resigned was the chairman. So that's the last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a, a point of order, she hadn't been the chairman for the last four months or four months. Okay, so she was voted, she someone else was voted in? The chairman and I was voted in. Oh, good. Thank you for clearing that up. Yeah, I think what we're doing tonight is counterproductive because, as Dan pointed out, we have trouble getting volunteers, and when one comes to slap them around a little bit, it's just not good business in my estimation. I don't know Mr. Fellini from, I don't think we've ever met that I'm aware of. I've seen you at Dunkin' Donuts. Well, that's how I keep my, <laughs> my figure. But, um, you know, I don't think we want to discourage people like him or, you know, people that are retired or people that want to put uh, time into the town. I, I, I'm prepared to vote for him tonight. Well, if there's no more questions, then I'll move to. I, I have a question. I don't think it discourages somebody just to follow a process. It's, it's, you know, again, it I applaud Mr. Fellini's, uh, you know, uh, willingness to serve, and you know, whether it's conservation or open space or whatever it is, you know, having fisheries. I mean, that's that's wonderful. <coughs> and we certainly don't want to discourage anybody, but it goes back to the point of the other applicants in, in following some semblance of a process. Uh, Well, I don't think it's any rush, and I, I moved to appoint Gino um, Bellini to the Conservation Commission with a term to expire at 2020. Second. All righty. There's been a motion and a second. All those in favor? All right. Discussion? Sure. So I agree, I, I agree that there, the process of having the, the committee review the applicants is the best practice. Uh, but it doesn't have to be that that way and in in this case I'm leaning on the side to in keep encouraging the people that are applying for the positions there are was one last over the weekend there was an applicant now a second one has come in so a, a third in total right so I suspect that we'll have uh, a chance and you your committee will have a chance to, to vet those folks out uh, this this candidate has has made a strong case for himself uh, he has a strong recommendation uh, from members of the board and members of the public so I just wanted to just wanted it to be clear that this is not this is not the, the entire board of selectmen uh, forcing someone on a committee it's a uh, it's a candidate that came in that is is qualified for it and, and enthusiastic for it, and we want to strike while the iron's hot, and keep them encouraged and and joining in on the uh, the process of town government. So just wanted to say that before we voted. It's good points. All right, so we had a motion and a second, so we'll go ahead and take a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I vote aye as well. Any opposed? We are none. Thank Welcome you. to the board. Thank you. All right, next up, we've already taken the vote on the submitted articles, so we'll move on to vote to approve the minutes of August 20th, 2018. Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the minutes as printed. Second. All right, have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Vote aye as well. The pass is unanimously. Next up, we're moving on to old business, and 
We have a record of approved bills and payrolls from August 27th and September 4th. You only know, want to read those? Uh, sure, thank you. Be a record of the actions of the board um, designee on August 27th. Uh, I am pleased to report that um, on August 27th, 2018, I personally reviewed 11 accounts payable warrants totaling $849,259.16 and two payroll warrants totaling $461,750.22 prepared by the town accountant and authorized the itemized expenditures for payment and signed it. And I also have a record of the actions of the board designee on uh, September 4th, 2018 where <clears throat> I'm pleased to report that two accounts payable warrants totaling $1,167,681.15 and two payroll warrants totaling $1,215,674.75 prepared by the town accountant and authorized the expenditures, the itemized expenditures for payment and signed by me. <coughs> Move to accept the reports. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote it as well. So that passes the answer. Um, Ed, were you planning on talking about the LED trucks under Town of Industries report or perhaps under Old Business? Whatever you want, Mr. Chairman. So uh, you want to talk about it under Old Business? I'll take it under the Town of Industries report. So I'll move on to that now. All right. All right. Well, you have. Uh, a uh, memorandum uh, from my office uh, dealing with information that we've gathered uh, over the last month or two regarding um, the uh, what some communities do to uh, address the issue of these LED trucks. So, if uh, I would uh, request that the uh, board of selectmen. Uh, read that memorandum because it's pretty extensive and uh, we can have it on our uh, a future agenda when the board uh, has been able to digest the information that's there. Could, could you just say to the public what's an LED truck so that people know what it is? Well, it, if you look at billboards that you see on the side of the road that, um, that change every 5, 10, 15 seconds, uh, that have uh, the, the light is a lot more intense than you would, you know, for old billboards that would have uh, lighting that would come from lamps. This would be done internally. Although now this is on the side of trucks. Okay, so and it doesn't have anything to do with driverless vehicles. No. This is, no. This is lighting on the vehicles. This that is billboards is, on the side okay. of because okay. I was a little confused about that Track myself trailers. originally. Okay. Box trucks, whatever. A um, couple other items. Uh, these are uh, things, issues that you'll be dealing with in the next uh, couple of meetings in September. Uh, we'll uh, be presenting the ADA transition plan and survey. Um, we had it uh, done by uh, Weston and Sampson. We did a survey of uh, six town buildings and town parks and areas and uh, recommendations uh, to make these pl uh, situations handicap accessible. Uh, and uh, we'll be presenting the select net plan, uh, the housing production plan, which was uh, done by the Old Colony Planning Council. Uh, they appeared before the planning board uh, a couple of weeks ago. and. Uh, got the endorsement of our uh, Pembroke Planning Board, and uh, we'll be presenting uh, the findings from the Old Colony Planning Council about the housing production plan, which goes towards, obviously, um, dealing with uh, affordable housing in the town of Pembroke. And then I already mentioned the capital improvements plan that we are interviewing people, firms for, and we'll present that to the board next Monday night. That's it. All right, thanks for that report. Next up, we have Ask the Selectman. Anybody had anything for that tonight? Uh, any members of the audience have anything? 
Hearing none, move right along to new business. Any of the selectmen have anything under that tonight? All right, next up we have upcoming issues. On October 1st, there's the signing of the special town meeting warrant to post October 9th, 2018. October 8th, there'll be no meeting in observance of Columbus Day. On October 23rd, there is the special fall town meeting at 7 p.m. at AE Learning Lane, which is the high school. November 19th, class one, class two, taxi and precious metals license renewal will take place. On November 26th, there will be no meeting for Thanksgiving. On December 3rd, the common victualler license renewals will take place. On December 10th, the liquor licenses, live entertainment, Sunday and amusement device license renewals will take place. In October, on December 10th again, we will set the selectmen's winter break schedule. And lastly, on December 17th, we will discuss the 2019 calendar. There's a lot coming up. Ed, is there a need for our executive session today? Yes, sir. So. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I move that we enter executive session on the Mass General Law, Chapter 38, Section 21 3, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation of an open meeting. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect <coughs> on the litigation position of the public body, and the chair so declares. River Marsh, Water Street, uh, Mass Housing, 916. Second. All right, you have a motion and second. I'll take a roll call. Uh, starting with John. Aye. Yes. 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 All in favor, so we will now be moving into executive session. With no need to come back out. With no need to come back out. 